All right. So last scenario then is where we have circles that touch with a common chord. Now, for the purposes of this, we're going to look at question eight on page three, four, seven. Uh, question eight, page three, four, seven. So in question eight, we are given two circular ring roads, S1 and S2, and we're given a diagram. So S1 and S2. Sorry, got backwards there, S1 and S2 there. We are also given the equation of the two circles. So the equation of S1 is x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 2y minus 23 is equal to 0. And the equation of circle 2 is x squared plus y squared plus 6x plus 4y plus 3 is equal to 0. So on the diagram, we have point D and point E, which are the points of intersection of the circle. We have center 1. All right, center two and center one. And we have the point F, which is the point of intersection of these two lines here. Now, because the two circles overlap, we can't use the distance between the centers to actually work with here. So we have to come up with a different way of working. Now, in the question, we are asked, first of all, to find the coordinates of the two centers and the two radii. So again, using our minus G minus F and so on, we look at the center here. So center one is the coordinates four minus one, and the radius of the circle is two root 10. And center two is the coordinates minus three minus two, and we have a radius of root 10. Now, what this is going to be important to, uh, for is finding the coordinates of point F because we can use the distance between the centers as a ratio um, of uh, how to find the, the point F, I think. All right. So the next question, uh, it says a road DE. So DE is a road that intersects the two circles at D and E. All right, so we're looking for the equation of the road DE, and we are given the coordinates of point D, which is the point minus two, one. So you, the easiest way of finding the equation of the common chord, so DE is the common chord of the two circles, and the easiest way of finding that is S1 minus S2 is equal to zero. Now we can use the point D, all right, so if we're looking at this here, if we can find the slope of the line connecting the centers, the line DE will be perpendicular to that, because if we think about it, if we join these two points here, the point F will be the midpoint of this co common chord here. Point D and point E will be on the external rim of the circle. This is the radius, this is the radius. So we have an isosceles triangle here and the point F is, because it's halfway, is means that these two lines here are perpendicular. But again, the easiest way of looking at this, we can go about it by finding the slope, or the equation of this line, the equation of this line, but or the slope of this line, then finding the perpendicular slope and using the point y minus y1 equals m by x minus x1. But the easiest option is s1 minus s2 is equal to zero. So if we use this option here, we're looking at s1 minus s2. So the x squareds and y squareds will cancel out. So we have minus 8x minus 6x, which is minus 14x, uh, 2y minus 4y minus 2y, and minus 23 minus 3, which is minus 26, is equal to 0. If we divide across by um, minus 2, we get the equation 7x plus y plus 13 is equal to 0. So that's the easiest way to answer part B there of that question. The last thing that we're asked to do is find the equation, or find the coordinates, sorry, of points E and F. So again, a couple of different ways we can do things. 
if you're looking to find point E, first of all, we know that point E is the intersection point between the two circles. So what we could do is solve the two circles um, simultaneously. Or, uh, and the fact that we know that point D is the, D is the point minus 2, 1, we can use that information as well. Um, another thing we can do is we can look at finding the point F using the... Um, the intersection point from between the two lines, all right? We know that the equation of line DE is 7x plus y plus 13 is equal to zero. We have enough information to find the line C1, C2. So you find the slope between the two centers. We have both of the coordinates of the two centers and using that information, we find the equation of line C1, so let's call this line two and line one. So we know line one is the point, is the line seven X plus Y plus 13 is equal to zero. Using that information there, you will find the equation of line two. We know how to find the equation of line, so I'm just gonna give it to you here, is the equation X minus seven Y minus 11 equals zero. And we can then solve simultaneously. If we solve simultaneously, we get the point of intersection of these two lines, which is point F, and we find point F to be the point minus 1.6 comma minus 1.8. So that's the coordinates of point F. Then we can use the fact that point F is the midpoint of our chord, and we can use a translations method to go from point D to point E. So if we're starting at point D, which is the point minus 2, 1, going to point F, which is the point minus 1.6, minus 1.8, and doing the same translation to point E, we end up with, so going from minus 2 to minus 1.6 is an increase of 0 0.4, so we increase by 0 0.4 again, and that's minus 1.2. And going from 1 to minus 1.8 is a decrease of 2.8. So we decrease by 2.8 again, and that gives us minus 4.6. All right. So that's how we look at finding, <clears throat> excuse me, the equation of um, the, or the, the points E and F. That's one method. There are several different methods, but that's probably one of the easier ways of look, going about it. Right, so based on this video, I'd like you to try the exercises, uh, exercise 14 on page 346 and 347. And then once, and then that concludes our work on the circle. So the next video that I'm going to upload is going to start looking at proof by induction. Thanks.